Warning, the spoiler cast does contain spoilers of current and past movies, books, video, games, TV shows, and possibly your life. So if you're listening to a show called Spoiler Cast and you're pissed off that we gave away spoilers, we really don't care. Thanks again and have a wonderful day. Hello and welcome to Spoiler Cast by All Tower Media. I'm Roper, joined again by uh, Jareth. Hi, Jareth. Blarf. Blarf. What are you reading over there? Nothing. Nothing. Just scrolling through your phone. You're killing time because it's been like thirty minutes since I got here. It's not been thirty minutes. It's been like half of that, slightly more. <laughs> so 16. like seventeen minutes. Uh, almost twenty. No, yeah. it has been. I've got 20. it right here. If you got here, you said here at 6.56, it is 7.22, and we're just now getting started, but you were already inside at that so point. That means that I am uh, almost tw- almost 30 minutes. Almost 30 minutes. <laughs> we were doing our recording for uh, Spellbook. It's hot out there. I apologize. It's just bullshit out there. Sorry. There's all that outside, and I There hate is. It. There is outside, and there's also cut grass outside. Yeah, that shit's bullshit. Like, if, if ever there was a kryptonite for Jareth, it would be freshly cut grass. Also bullets. Oh, what a pain <laughs> well, bullets, but you know. So, uh, Dire Monkey, how are you? Peachy. Yeah? Yeah. Been doing all right? I have been. So been busy. We, also knives. Well, anything that Water can... in my lungs, fire. Are you sure, though? I mean, yeah, you don't know. You don't know. You could be impervious to yeah, all of that. Yeah, you could be. I have actually, <laughs> it, all of them except for bullets, I have experienced. But you and did, I was, but did you die? I was not impervious, <laughs> but I'll did, say that. But did you die? All of them created a scenario where dying was a possibility. But did you die? No. Okay, so you're fine. Yeah. Case See settled, now, closed. now, now you're like Doomsday. Anytime you get hurt by a thing, you can no longer be hurt by the thing. No, I've been set on fire <laughs> twice, and both both <laughs> times was equally terrifying. On purpose or accident? <laughs> both. How on, did you get set on fire? Well, wait. Was I? Are you asking? Did I purposefully set myself on yes. fire? Or did someone purposefully set me both. on fire? Both. Sort of both on both occasions. Really? I set a friend on fire in Waffle House once. I set my friend Adam's head on fire one time by accident. Like, uh, I think it's a rite of passage for all boys. <laughs> they were doing... My cousin was doing something that intentionally would set me on... Well, intentionally with the knowledge that this was a possibility, <laughs> and then it happened. Okay. So he's firing fucking like Molotov cocktails at me. Not Molotov cocktails. <laughs> what? The, uh, I was about to say, hell in the... <laughs> Roman candles. <laughs> so you were in a bottle rocket war. Um... I was a casualty of. Oh, like I was. I you were had, on the sidelines. I held no bottle rockets, oh. but I was the target. Oh, so they were chasing you with bottle rockets, and yeah. you got nailed with a Roman candle. Yeah, okay. not a Molotov cocktail. I was about to say, good grief! Yeah, my cousins, my cousins, an anarchist. <laughs> like, they roll deep, <laughs> apparently, because uh, yeah, I took the last catch. Took the last graham cracker, man. Yeah, that's what happens. All's fair now. All's fair in love of graham crackers. <laughs> Molotov cocktail, that ass. <laughs> no, so, uh, you know, have you ever taken a Bic lighter and removed the top of it and then cranked the fuel up? Uh, like, you, you know what I'm talking about? I was, I was a smoker, so yeah. Yeah, but you know how, how to make, like, the yeah. flame that's, like, two right. feet tall? Yeah. So... I had done this, and I had removed the metal piece, and then we were using the the little the little thing that scoots it across to increase the amount of fuel that comes out. And you slide it over, you pull it off, you spin it back around, you just keep doing this to completely open it up, and you'll have a flame coming out of the top of this lighter. It's huge. But you burn up all your fuel super quick. So my buddy Adam, which you met just the other day, yeah. uh, we're going to have him on the show Hopefully, sometime in the very near future, um, he's actually getting moved back up into town. But once he's in, you know, we'll get him on, and, uh, and you guys get to hear him. But uh, he, he <laughs> I'm holding this lighter at an angle, and he's standing in front of me, and I couldn't get it to strike. And he was stepping forward to try to help, 
And at that moment, I've been there had been fuel releasing right in front of where I was, and I lit it, and the whole thing went off like a giant fireball, which engulfed his head. And every time he would blink, he was like, "My eyes are sticky." He burned off his eyelashes and a little bit of his eyebrows, and <laughs> he punched his hair out. And and he's like, "Every time I blink now, my eyes are really tacky and sticky." <laughs> I'll teach him to try to help. <laughs> yeah, we were being really dumb that day. Mm. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it's par for the course. But Wonder Woman was a great movie. It wasn't great. It was good. Would you call it great or good? Jared? I would say good. Um, Maybe wonderful. It's Ooh. it's definitely one of those movies that, like, on a good day, it's great. Yeah. So it, it's, like, it's like right on that line between seven and eight for me. Um, I would agree. I would put it in the same, very, very same spot for me. So it's it, definitely dependent on mood, uh, whether or not it's an eight or not. Yeah. So I had a, a few hangups about the movie. Um, some of the combat was a little, eh, and I never, ever at any point in time felt like choosing these have a real danger, as you and I discussed the other day. Well, they leaned extremely heavily on uh, cutting. Yeah. Which, God, I really wish studios would get over that method it only pulls you out of that action yeah also um there was a scene where it seemed like she was i think that she was in more danger than they made a point of showing us and i think that the editing is part of the reason why that is where was Uh, that whenever they're assaulting veld uh well, first she like wrecks like a hundred dudes. Yeah. Then she gets up in that room and she fights like six dudes in that room. Like three or four times in there, she has to change up her tactic because she gets hit. Yeah. But they immediately cut away every time she gets hit and it goes into another like weird slow motion move that right. she does. Which draws attention away from the fact that she was just redirected by a human being. Yeah. Who was like, I hit you with this. And she was like, oh shit. I want to kick this guy now because I'm facing this way. Um, and I think that if that had been edited better, they could have maintained the fact that she was clearly in control but was in danger. Right. Because um, as the movie progresses, the amount of danger she's in becomes less as she kind of learns to use her powers better. Right, and and that's kind of what you and I were talking about the other day. See, for me, whenever I watch something of this nature, um, there's almost always been that comic book moment where it's like, okay, you're like really ridiculously powerful, and, but your perception of that amount of power is kind of nerfed. Like, you don't recognize that, and it takes something to like make that a thing to make that happen to suddenly make it click and then and then by yeah. the end of the movie that becomes the answer it's right? like if i suddenly developed the ability to fly i'd be pretty tentative about it i'm not gonna go jump off the empire state building right off right i don't feel like dying right even if i'm pretty sure that flying is a thing i can do <laughs> right i'm gonna well, start we've small. had that we've had that discussion on if you just got the power of flight that you probably wouldn't actually fly too high off the ground. Yeah, no, I'd probably use it pretty rarely because I don't feel it like could falling. just like it could just like st- you don't know what caused it, therefore you don't know what makes it go away. Yeah. So like, <laughs> maybe it just goes away at some point and, and then I you just plummet to your doom. Yeah, I don't want to be up there when it happens. <laughs> Cuz that would be awful. But she she kind of goes from well, really no no power you know, I mean, she knows she's you know a warrior. Well, walking away, relatively high power, because uh, Amazons are better than us, right? Well, no, but that's what I'm saying. It's she like she, kind, goes she doesn't being... know what that standard is. Like she doesn't know yeah. how much of a stare up she is from us, right? She knows she's better, but how better, right? And she starts out as basically Captain America, yeah, with intensive uh, training in fucking the fuck out of every fucking thing Mm -hmm. like triple arrow shot bullshit okay yeah which i'm super pleased to see her back in a film oh um oh damn it what's her name i don't got nothing all i I know she's robin wright the princess bride robin wright yeah also house of cards yes what who is she in house of cards his wife Oh yeah. my fucking yeah. god! Yeah, blew, Where have you been? Blew my mind. Too. I've only seen like two episodes. Oh, of okay. It. 
I liked what I saw. I just never followed up. But holy <laughs> shit, you're right. Yeah. And now she's, you know, uh, the general, uh, the prime general for uh, An- the, uh, the Amazons. Antiope, I think was her name. I think that was what they called her. Uh, she was fucking rad. Yeah. Dude, okay, you and I talked about it the other day. She did a really, really cool thing, shooting three arrows at the same time. Right? Yeah, and they but focus the, on that moment. That moment. But it's the moment before that that was super awesome. Yeah, she takes a dude out in melee with her bow and then just <laughs> casually shoots a guy she's not even looking at. Just to her right. like just, Left. Yeah, just to her left. And just doesn't even look at him. Doesn't even... Doesn't even not even a head turn, nothing. Just draws, shoots, he dies. She's like, there's probably a guy over there. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> He's not worth my attention. It was wonderful. Yeah. That shit was rad. Yeah, that whole that whole beginning part uh, was pretty awesome. Um, it was kind of odd, though, watching the, uh, the one Amazon swing down through, watch the bullet fly through, and then just showing her just kind of hanging there. And then Diana's reaction to it. I think that seemed a little oddly placed during all of that. I mean, she'd seen people die before, right? Well, I think it wasn't about seeing the Amazon die at all. Right. Also, maybe not. I don't know how long Amazons live. Probably forever. Well, yeah, I was about to say, of all of them, are, well, maybe they haven't seen anybody die. Because they're all still there from like way back when. But it's also the first time she's seen this weapon function. All right, that's fair. Because if one of those Amazons had been shot with an arrow, she'd be like, holy shit, I've been shot with an arrow. I'm pissed off. I have an arrow in me. (laughs) Instead, it's like, boom, this person just fucking took her out. Right. Dead. She's like, what the fuck did I just see happen? Now, okay, so uh, Chris Pine's character, um, Steve uh, Trevor. Steve Trevor. Steve Trevor. Uh, He shows up. uh, Plane crash. She saves him. Captain Kirk. Yes, she saves him, drags him out of the water, and then the Nazis were following him. That was not Nazis. Oh, the Germans. I apologize. World War One. I. I apologize. You're right. It's World War One. It's the Germans. Um, yeah, well, you're you're right. Uh, that that was totally me. That was my fault. Uh, so they 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 end up finding him. Um, she's pretty quick to side with him. Yeah. Right. Just because. Pretty much. We don't have a whole lot of context there. It's just kind of like... I think that what it comes down to is, A, he's the first new person she's seen. Right. So that plays a part. But then she's like, who's this? And he's like, the bad guys. Yeah. And she just kind of buys that. And then the fight starts. And then he fights alongside her, kind of. Um, I, I think that what, you, what to take away from that is the fight starts... And she hasn't picked a side yet. Right. And then the Amazons pick a side. <laughs> the Amazons are like, there's dude in boats. We're killing them. <laughs> and then the dudes in boats are like, we've got guns. We're killing you. <laughs> and then after that, the dudes in the boats, the Germans, have killed Amazons now. Right. So she's like, okay, I'm killing them. He has already stated his opinion of them. Okay, fair. But then they go to turn on him, and she's like, whoa, time out, can't kill him. And then they go to interrogating him, and it's kind of funny watching him you know, with the uh, the lasso. Yeah, the lasso where of he, truth. He's just like, he looks like he's just having literally the truth squeezed out of him. Yeah. And he's trying super hard to lie, but he can't. Yep. I mean, he does for a minute or two. I would say seconds or two. (laughs) But he's trying. But also, I think that there is... um, As cool as that scene is, I think it's a little drawn out. Yeah. Um, Especially with how short some of the other sections of the movie seem. I think that was just for them to be able to establish who he was. And also really stress what the power of that rope is, because it's kind of integral to Wonder Woman, but not everybody may know it, because they... Because they don't know who Wonder Woman is? Well, I mean, yeah. Maybe? That's a possibility. I don't know. That sounds dumb. Not everybody grew up on, you know, the Justice League. I didn't grow up on the Justice League, but... And not everybody reads comics. All right, fair. 
It's just like you know, in an iron in the Iron Man movie, they go back through and they explain Iron Man. Well, yeah, but and what his shit does. Yeah, but his arc reactor is just something that like facilitates his suit and pulls the shrapnel from his his uh, heart. Yeah, and those are two things, but it's not like they had to spend a whole bunch of time on it. Well, but with this, they just you know they stayed heavily focused on him. The fact that he's a spy. I, I guess it was supposed to set up most of the story, though, because he's like, I've got this book. It sets the, the foundation for the book, um, uh, the, the poison doctor, uh, the general that she works for. Uh, it kind of just sets everybody in place. Yeah, that, really. that was their uh, exposition moment. Right. And so after that, they just kind of let him free wander? Uh. Kinda. I guess. I think they just throw him down in a grotto in a glowing hot tub. And he's all kinds of excited about it. Well, and yeah, naked. it's super neat. And he's naked. And she comes in. Was it just me, or did you have kind of like this really weird... Just watching the both of them, where she's like, what's that? And he's like, what? Uh, oh, a watch? Like, there was so much stuff that was leaning towards them discussing sex, that it, but it never happens. Like, well, the moment the, after that when they're on the boat with one another, and he's like, here, I made you a place to sleep. I'm going to sleep over here. And, and then they like tying himself down so yeah. he can sleep along the rails. Yeah. Like, you don't want to fall off a boat while you're sleeping. No, <laughs> you don't. I appreciated that moment. He put up a bag. He's like, I'm going to sleep here. I'm, I'm going to tie, tie myself, myself in. Off. Yeah. So that was a good moment. And then she was like, you're being dumb. Come sleep with me. You don't sleep with women? I, he's like, I do sleep with women. And that whole conversation was like them discussing sex without discussing sex. And it was super awkward. Well, I think that the majority of it was him discussing sex and her not discussing sex. But she was discussing it because she was like, I've read all of the books on this. Oh, well, yeah, but she was talking about just sleeping next to somebody. Because of her innocence, because she doesn't understand all of that. And he's like looking at it from a different standpoint. Right. Which is specifically from the sexual standpoint. Right. Because later he's like, blah, 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 sex. And she's like, yeah, I know all about sex, blah. Yeah, well, what about it? I read turns about out, in books. Turns out men are not important to it. <laughs> to pleasure. Yeah, I buy it. <laughs> and he's like, well, they're kind of important. Yeah. So that whole like that whole them getting away thing, that that boat scene, I I could have done without it. Yeah. Um it was also pretty drawn out, but it also was kind of fun. And set up a lot of their dynamic moving forward. I could buy the setup of dynamic, but they could have done something different with it. Probably. That, it's just that that was kind of awkward, especially for it not being really any kind of real focus for them. Well, a lot of their initial interactions were kind of driven towards the idea of being awkward. Like that moment where he's naked getting out of the pool and she's kind of like, just kind of excitedly talking at him, and he's right. super embarrassed. That shit was funny as fuck. Oh, it was hilarious. But <laughs> again, it was one of those things that's like, well, you're kind of dancing on a line there that I guess this is what you're wanting to do with it, but I don't really see a purpose of it. Eh, it was fun. Eh. And then, okay, so... It was more fun than literally anything that happened in Batman v Superman. <laughs> that or, even, one scene. or even Suicide Squad. Yeah. <laughs> like, it got me to actually laugh in the theater. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, they get back, which apparently, the it's a... Uh, Themyscira. Themyscira is not far from uh, Great Britain. London? It would seem not. Right? But he did. they were like hooked up to another boat, and he said, we got lucky and caught a ride. Right. So. But that's. The, eh? <coughs> the only reason I say that is because she was asleep the whole time. They made it in the night. Yeah, so it would seem that Themyscira is off the coast of France somewhere? I, that's what I'm, that's what I'm not getting, right? It's it's super strange, I like on its location, because clearly he was in Germany. No, he wasn't in Germany. He was being chased by the Germans. He was being chased by the Germans, but he was not in Germany. Yeah, so he could be pretty much anywhere where there's water. 
Well, yeah, because he okay, so he had to be close to the coast because he was on a bu- uh, an airplane. Yep. So he well, takes off. He tar- starts flying. He's on the on the plane. They start chasing him in more planes, and they're on the ship. He could have had a carrier. Do what now? They could have been on a carrier. A carrier. A- aircraft carrier. No, Car- no, 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 carriers weren't exactly yeah. super common. They were, actually, World they were War One uncommon. Or well, they were uncommon. But World, they had World War One, and here, here's the the premise on all this. So um, he is at this base location. They the, just fall off the desk. The mount piece came undone from the back of the, the desk. Yes. Anyway, so um, he's at a base. To they're start at this with. base, and he ends up. Um, he's supposed to be there doing reconnaissance. Just observe and report. That is exactly what his job is. But he steals the notebook of their chief chemist who's designing a chemical weapon that could end the war. Could literally eat through and destroy gas masks and then kill whoever's inside the gas mask. Well, I mean, if it can eat through a gas mask, there's a Mm. good chance it can eat through me. Yeah, so that's a bad thing. And um, (sighs) he's like, I got to do something about this. So he steals her book and then he grabs a plane. And he manages to destroy the base location. and uh, Or at least large chunks of it. Yeah, and then he ends up getting away. And then the next scene that we... Well, that was actually back. That was a flashback. Which, and then we see him crashing into the water. Yeah, and the then he's, he's gunned down, and that's whenever he lands or crashes outside of the... Uh, uh, the island, the Themyscira. And and then from there, they hop on one of their Amazonian boats to go back off into the world. And then that's why I'm having this question on, it's like, where the hell is this? Right? But then again, I think we're supposed to be left with that idea of where the fuck is Themyscira. Right. It just seems... It's, it, was a, it was a weird moment for me. It's, it's an oddity. Yeah. Because... Um, it's, there isn't a moment where there's like, oh man, it's been two days, you know. Right. And you're waking up again. Right. We see her go to sleep. And, and then, then wake up, and he's like, hey, we got lucky, caught a ride, and we're in London. And it seems like there's been no time has passed since they went to sleep. Right. That might have just been a strange editing thing again. Possibly. Perhaps. I'm, and she's like, "It's." he's like, welcome to London. She's like, it's hideous. And he's like, yeah, it's not for everybody. See, I would assume that Themyscira is somewhere near Greece. Right? Because... Right? Right? Greek mythology, etc. But then... But then we also... We don't fucking know. Zeus could have put that shit anywhere. Well, true, but... He could have put that shit on land. He I, didn't. I mean, yeah, I know. But, but it just seems weird, because then you'd had to go on all the way up and around in order to be able to sail, to sail that distance, which isn't a night's trip. Yeah, no. I don't know. It's super strange. So, it could be anywhere. I guess. Anyhow, so all of that happens. They get to London, and she's just straight up marching around like she's ready to go. And he's she's like... She's got her sword. Her shield. <laughs> and she's like, point me to the front. And he's like, well, it's that way, but we're going this way. And she's like, no, we're going the wrong damn direction. That um, Those like preceding scenes of them heading towards... Like, the, the council the, meeting? The council meeting were very charming. They were. I en- I enjoyed them. That moment where she sees a baby and she's, she's just like, like, "Oh, a baby!" baby. <laughs> uh, and she's just like going at it, and she's got she's, just like she's got a sword and a shield and, and a lasso, like, and he's like, "Whoa, time out! No babies. <laughs> that baby's not made out of clay." <laughs> But they're... she was like, she lit the fuck up over that. She's like, oh, baby. Well, the first time she's ever seen a baby. Because there's not any babies on uh, on the island. She was the first new person in hundreds of years. She was totally not made out of clay. She's totally made out of clay. No, because they reveal it. Ares is like, yeah, Zeus made a baby with your mom. Yeah. They made clay, baby. I don't think that they... They made clay. I know they, Zeus. They smashing things. I know me, Zeus. Zeus is like, let me smash. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, no. He's like, you can like, sculpt me, this dude. Let me smash. And she's like, okay, fine. You can smash. So... Got blue. <laughs> got, got yellow. <laughs> so they finally find some clothing for her to wear. That whole her getting dressed up scene is kind of humorous. It's funny, but also another one of those drawn out scenes. Yeah, um, I like the secretary. Oh, what was her name? I don't remember what her name is. Damn go, it! Go back up to the the list, please. Whoop, whoop, whoop. 
Who are you looking for? Uh, she's the the secretary. Um, what was her name? I don't remember what her name is. I don't see her on here. Wait, Etta, I think is the no, I know. Yeah, right there. Really? 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 I don't know. I don't. That doesn't seem right. Go back, please. It doesn't. It does not seem right. I feel like that's the right name. Etta yeah. basically has to be. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Great. I mean, unless it's the chief. No, it's not the <laughs> chief. The chief is actually this Indian dude. That's like I, from I wish that the, I wish now that the chief was her name, <laughs> like her actual Christian name. Her parents' the mother like, called them the chief. Yeah, your your name is the chief. <laughs> no, that's her whole first name. So anyway, um, they find her. She's helping pick out clothes. She's kind of hilarious um in most of the things that she's in uh i like how he just he's like here and he gives her the sword and shield yeah and she's like oh oh okay she uses it though yeah she does which is where are you going (laughs) which i mean if i was running out of an alleyway i would pause at some little short chick with a sword being like where are you going yeah that is out of the ordinary. <laughs> it is not, sharp. Not as out, out of as the, out of the ordinary as watching four dudes trying to gun down one guy and all of them being wildly unsuccessful because some chick has bracelets. Bracers. Well, they don't recognize that. All they know is that they go boom and she goes ping and they stop bullets. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. And then she proceeds to whip the biscuits off of them. Yeah, all of their biscuits. And he's he's I love that uh that uh, Chris Pine's character hits like one guy and he's like, "Yeah, I did something." Like at I, th- I, at that moment, every time that happened where she was doing things and then somebody else did a thing, I could not help but hear your voice going, "And I helped." Yep. <laughs> I I do enjoy um Throughout the course of the movie, there's this evolution for his character, and it's not like a moral evolution. He's not growing as a person. No. But his uh, role in their relationship is changing throughout the whole thing. At first, he's, you know, the manly man, like, blah, 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 I've got to do this. Yeah. But, like, as he witnesses just how awesome she is and everything. He's like, you got it. <laughs> I'm taking a back seat, and I'm just going to help you do you. Yeah, you do you, darling. And that moment was, like, really important to that. Because after that, he's kind of like, she's going to do her stuff. That actually builds up to the very end scene. I'll get to that in a little bit. But um, um, as they're progressing along, they're talking about that, that trench way where you know, like we haven't made it anywhere. We've no been man's stuck land in, just in outside no, of Elb, yeah. And she's like, no, screw that. And they made it very clear. Like, they kept saying, no man shall cross that area. No man. And she's like, screw this. And she just mounts the, the, the ladder and starts up there. And they're like, holy crap, she's doing it. <laughs> that was like that moment for them because none of the other guys had seen her actually perform. Actually, none of them, outside of him, her deflecting bullets off a couple of people. Or whipping the shit out of that dude in the bar. Yeah, well, but that was just like, she like hit a guy and threw him. Really hard. Really, really hard. But everybody was like, oh, okay, cool. So they had like a really low taste of what her power was, right? Yeah. It wasn't until she mounts that ladder and starts across the field that suddenly they were like... And takes a brigade's worth of bullets? Yeah, and they were like, holy shit. <laughs> like, that was like her moment, right? And it was cool, at least how quickly uh, Steve Trevor responds to that. Yeah. Once she's like, this is a thing I'm doing, you can't stop me. And she goes out there and she doesn't immediately die. He's like, we're supporting her. Yeah, let's go. We're, we're rolling up. Let's on. go. <laughs> she's drawing all of the fire. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. And then they charge out there. And of course they start doing the same, you know, they, they start adding fire the other direction. They finally break rank. They get through, they make it to the town and half the time that they were going to plan on, on making it, which was excellent. Right. Yeah. They save the town. Of course she rolls through that thing like a fucking steam truck. Yeah. She came in like a wrecking ball. Yeah, she does. Because she literally Literally jumps. at one point, she comes in like a wrecking Yeah, ball. she just crashes, literally just crashes through walls. And she's like, hey guys, I'm here now. She blows up a clock tower with her body. Okay, so 
the, okay, that scene was where uh, Chris Pine's character saw that happen back on the beach. Yeah, where they did the shield cool. leap. And he was like, "Oh, this is a thing that she probably knows how to do. I want to make this happen." And he's, I loved that because I thought they were actually going to flip that thing over the top of him and, and like use work, it as a turtle. Yeah, yeah and no. work their way in. They went way cooler with that it. That was so much better. Where she's, he's like, "Shield, <laughs> run, 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 jump." Super Mario jump all the way into the clock tower, and that sniper stood no chance. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he blew up. I'm pretty sure he blew up, too. Also, I don't think they say Wonder Woman, like, one time in the whole movie. They don't. Which is super cool. Yeah. As opposed to other movies where they're like, Captain America, Captain America. I'm Batman. Iron Iron Man, Iron Man, Iron Man. I'm Batman. (laughs) I'm Batman. Uh, Because, you know, they're defining the identity by the superhero identity, right? Right. They're like, they're discovering, like, I am Batman. Right. Well, okay, so one of the things that I noticed is, so, like, in Marvel with Captain America, right? Captain America, big dick swinging, hit the water, everybody knew, right? Like, when it started, it was itty-bitty. Like, they they knew that there was a super serum uh, that was going to turn a guy into a thing, and then after it happened, they turned him into, like, this, like, yeah, they went full media blitz. Right. And then it wasn't until he went and saved all those guys on that one mission, right? Mm-hmm. And he came back with everybody that suddenly they're like, hey, we've actually got like an actual useful tool here that he started making a bigger splash. But there were tons of people that knew about it, right? He was in the media. He was he was a, a face of things. And then he actually went out and saved a bunch of people and proved himself to the soldiers that he was with. And then everybody knew, right? Yeah. The difference with what DC's doing and with Wonder Woman, whenever we find out about Wonder Woman and Batman versus Superman, Batman didn't know about her. No one knows about her. So what that told me walking into Wonder Woman was is that what happened here had to be really, really small and super controlled. There weren't a whole lot of people that knew about her. There wouldn't have had to have been because moving forward in things, moving forward in time, Batman has no recoll- has no knowledge of her. It's not like, sure, there may have been some rumors of things, weird stuff like that happening, but for the most part, she seems to have made it from World War One time frame to modern day time frame where Batman and all with this stuff is happening. With minimal footprint. With minimal footprint, which means that she's not been active. Or at least hasn't been flamboyantly active. Correct. Correct. Like Batman. Right. Like Batman, who's been branding people. Also has the sky branded occasionally. Yeah. Whenever he's needed. My logo's everywhere. Why is it always bats? (laughs) Everything I have is bats. Get over it. Anyway, so... She, I knew walking into this that there wasn't going to be, like, she wasn't going to go be the answer to the war. And for the most part, no one's even aware she's there. Yeah, she she isn't the answer to the war, but she is the reason the war doesn't continue. Correct. So, we make it across no man's land. We make it over there, she saves everyone. And they have this really nice moment of, you know, kind of peace, really. And they're dancing and having a good time, and Charlie the Sniper's like singing and dancing, and yeah, which he ultimately did not do much. He didn't do anything. And there was never a moment where you know they're like, "He's a good shot," right? And but he never ever had that moment. I mean, it it started to with the sniper, but then that went away because you know he started. He's broken. He's super broken. Uh, it's clear that he was taking shots at least during the final confrontation. Yeah. But we're not involved in that right. part of the fight. Because he's, you know, looking to the other two for ammo, and they're like, we don't got any, and he's like, we're all fucked. Yeah. So if he's looking to him for ammo, unless clear- he's been throwing it. <laughs> Clearly he's been taking shots. But yeah, no, it, it kind of sucked. Because after they save the town, they go to that party, the, mm. the gala. And at the gala, they end up bombing the city, the yeah. town, Killing the village, everybody. and kill everybody that was there. That's their, Which uh, apparently the gas didn't affect her. Yeah, clearly not. Like, at all? Because yeah, she just walking. ran straight into it. And even Steve showing up after the fact started hacking and coughing like it was bothering and him. And he only got to the edge of it. Right. Because if he went any further in, his ass would have been dead in a matter of seconds. Oh, absolutely. But, but she, she walked straight into it, looked around, and like walked back out. No harm, no foul. But Wonder Woman is ridiculous. Yeah. 
Especially once you realize that she is a Greek god, basically. She is a Greek god, and, by this thing's definition. And Greek gods can't really be killed? I guess she wouldn't necessarily be a god. She's like what Hercules would be. A demigod. A demigod. But Hercules is also basically unfucking killable Right. But she also has, like, a billion more powers than Hercules, apparently, according to that finale. Yeah. All right, where so, she, like, goes fucking Super Saiyan. So, here's the thing. Um, we've been kind of... I guess this, this hook didn't really set for you as well. Well, it didn't... Hook didn't set for me at all. So, we've been led to follow this general uh, of the Germans, who is the bad guy. Ludendorff. Ludendorff. Yeah. And he is the one that's working with Dr. Poison. Yeah. Which that's not her name, but they call Maru, her. Maru, I think was I her think last name. I think that's her name. Anyhow, so she's the one that's crafting up all the poisons. Also, I think she survives, maybe. Yes, she does, because she went to hit him. Well, unless. Well, we know she isn't dead, but then, like, we the know, whole place blows we up. We know so. good and well that Diana didn't crush her with a tank. <laughs> That's all we know. <laughs> so, anyhow, so um, we'll get to that in a minute. But, um, so we have this threat of Ares. Ares is who she perceives to be the bad guy. We've been given that information all along. And Ares, as we all know, or should know, is the god of war. And he is supposed to be the antagonist trying to, you know, perpetuate all of this conflict within humanity. It's what makes them greed, and it's what makes them, you know, jealous of one another. It's what makes them fight. He is flawed, his father's creation. That's the idea. Yeah, and so, he is the devil in this scenario, right. whereas he is, wherein he has introduced sin. Correct. But Diana finds out that that is not actually the case. Right. Humanity itself is already flawed. Yeah, he just we were kind all of, super flawed, and he just kind of gave us tools to do stuff with that. Yeah. He was like, hey, you don't like that guy, do you? And the, the good dude was like, nah. And he was like, here's a sharp stick. Figure out what you can do with that. <laughs> then, you know. Next thing you know, somebody a dude. Yeah, figured out that uh, if you poke enough holes in a person, they stop being. Yeah. So it's really just blood balloons. Yeah. <laughs> blood balloons. So she has been on this mission trying to track down Ares this whole time. With the understanding that if she kills Ares, the war will stop right. because she believes that humans are inherently good. And they're under his influence and control. Yeah. So she is convinced Ludendorff is Ares for a portion of the movie. And there's good reason for that. Because he's super fucked up. And and he also, in their one meeting, is like very... Ominous. <laughs> He might as well have a sign that says, I'm Ares on him. Right? Because he's like, you know nothing of Greek gods. Blah, 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 Greek gods. They know, blah. He's like ta- pontificating on that and on the virtues of war. And right. How but, su- but shitty that's, humans are. But that's kind of his mentality, though. That is who he is. Yeah. And it's he's, also because he's meant to be a big red herring. Right. So, um... And then she, he she, also has, she, like, pellets... Like, I have the uh, smelling salts, yeah, super s- smelling salts. Yeah, they're like sensu beans. <laughs> eat a sensu bean, makes you big and strong. Yeah, I guess Rawr! so. Sure. So, um, and that that happens. So she, but I never felt like she was out of control in that fight either. No, she, she mostly finally fucking tracks wrecks that. His oh ass. yeah, she straight up beats the bricks off that guy. Except for that one second where he's like, "I'm gonna stab you," and then she's like, "I can catch this sword." I don't know. I don't know why. About. Yeah, you're stupid. And then she impales him on the roof, and then the fighting continues, and she's like, "I don't understand," and it shakes her her beliefs, her foundation. Yeah, because she thinks she's killed Ares, and the humans are still doing stupid shit because humans. So that a- after that is when Chris Pine shows back up. Steve Trevor shows up um, on the rooftop when she's killed him, and she's like, I don't understand. The fighting's still happening. I, I, sh- I stopped this. I don't understand. And he's like, maybe it's because human beings suck. <laughs> yeah. He's like, we suck. He's like, a lot. I suck. Yeah, a lot. So I got But I don't suck all the time. Yeah, I guess still got to go. I still got fighting to do. You should totally come help us. And she's like, no, I'm not helping anymore. And that was kind of like the message was is like the world is screwed up and it's not good. And you're not you're too good for the world. That was like the thing, the whole movie. Right. Yeah. And then that moment comes and she's like, yeah, this whole place is screwed up. Why am I trying to save it? This is stupid. Yeah. 
And then Ares actually shows up. And he's like, I'm Ares, bitch. Also, I was that dude this whole time. Which, the, okay, so what was his name? Um, Sir Patrick. Yeah, Sir Patrick. Uh, how Who, do you say his name? David Twills? I don't know. Down, down, right there. I can't read that shit from this far. David T H E W L I S. Thulis? Thulis? I don't know. He's in Harry Potter. And. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he's uh Professor he? Lupin. Yeah. Yeah. He's the werewolf. Yeah, I like yeah. him. That guy. So he did a cool job. But this he actually did a, I I liked his performance in this. Was, so he they they sold you like you didn't know that he was Ares, right? No. Nah, but I knew that Ludendorff wasn't. Right. I just didn't know that Sir Patrick was. was right. See, and for me, I knew that Ludendorff wasn't Aries. Like, that was never going to be a thing for me. In my head, I was like, no. They're selling it way too hard for that to be a oh, thing. Oh, yeah. They oversold that oh, shit man. way too hard. Yeah. The, I mean, okay, so, yeah, he had the little... And then they had this, the small moments where Steve Trevor's like, what if he's not? Right. And you killed his ass and it just fucked everything up. Right. Like, you throw that in the mix and there's just a solid oh, chance. way oversold it. Way oversold it. Now, now it for him... fucked my world up if it had been him. Yeah. To, if it had been Ludendorff, <laughs> like, she she stabs his ass. He's like, oh, Mary's. And I'm like, no! <laughs> yeah, that would have been... Okay, that would have... That would have totally screwed with me because I was I was like they're selling us way too hard for this to be Aries, right? Like, what the fuck is the world anymore? <laughs> but with with him, Sir Patrick, um, when we first see him, he's he's talking about he's the bro- armistice, he's brokering brokering peace. Um, he's he's selling peace. That's what he's pushing, right? And he is infirm. Yeah, to that, a degree, everything about him is backwards of what you would expect Aries to be. But for me, when I'm watching this movie, whenever I was first introduced to him, I was like, there's something else to this guy. Like, he was too nice, right? Yeah. Something like it was, there was a hook there for me that wasn't hitting, and I wasn't quite sure what it was. I wasn't sold that he was Aries until he showed up, and he's like, oh, by the way, (laughs) it's been me. (laughs) I'm here in Germany all of a sudden. You called me an hour ago. Yeah, about that. I'm a god. So, and of course, I really, after she killed Ludendorff, I was like, okay, either Ares is not going to be real, or... Which also would which have been would, awesome. Yeah. We kind of, well, they would have it, been we pumped. kind of, it kind of spits in the face of what it is that they had going for them, though, because yeah. of who she is and what her origins are and things of that nature. But, it I would mean, have been better if he angle. was. It would have been better if he was dead. Yeah. If he was dead, that's what I was and they meaning. would have found an artifact of him or something of that nature, and it was like, that's what Ludendorff was getting his power from, or something of that effect. But if Ares that hadn't been there... That would have also lent so much credence and made it so much sadder. Because um, her mom was like, we don't need to train for this, he's right. never coming back, Right. blah, blah, blah. Then she never would have had to leave. And she, like, yeah... Right? Yeah. That would have been better if 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 they would have. Well, in I mean, the end... she totally would have had to have anyway because right. the fucking wars happening like pretty bad. Right. And the first time the Germans just happened to float a boat through there, <laughs> they're like, "Holy shit! There's an island." Yeah. Also, magic exists. Right. <laughs> Hail Hydra. <laughs> so. Blending our blending our fucking franchise mm, a little bit, yeah. But uh, you know, it's effectively what the what the, the same premise on that was is using you know magic and shit. So yeah, for Hydra, that's what yeah yeah. Well, sort of magic is science yeah. magic, and the Fjordar is digging for trinkets in the desert. <laughs> science magic, yeah, science magic. This is just magic magic. Though. This is straight up magic magic. But uh, at no point are they like, oh yeah, it's different dimensions. That, no, they, yeah, they don't yeah. offer you anything else Nothing. other than it's just magic. God's magic. <laughs> yeah. Deal with it. And I'm fine with that. And that's totally good, yeah. yeah. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. You establish it's God's, it's magic. Cool. And you run with that. Now, like I said, um, Ares does make the appearance. She does have the fight. Um, it was kind of odd watching during that fight. There was a lull within the battle long enough for Steve to like run over and have a conversation with her. It was after she got fucking hurled. Because there's like an explosion that happens, and that's what's making her ears ring, right? And I really, really would have died laughing if she would have started going, pop, 
Mop. 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 Oh, yeah, because Ares explodes her. Yeah. <laughs> but she managed... Like, Ares... What does he throw at her? I don't know. Oh, wait, no. He throws, like, a shitload of, like, bombs at her. Yeah, and they all go off. Well, and... she, like, does something that sets them off instead. Yeah. And there's this huge-ass explosion, and she can't hear. Her ears are ringing. And Steve comes running up, and he's saying something. Yeah. Which is ultimately, I'm going to go get in that plane and save the day all cliche style, but still right. be super cool doing it because right. I'm James T. fucking Kirk. Yeah. I mean, Steve fucking Trevor. I mean, uh, <laughs> beat uh, me up, Scotty, before I have to blow this thing up. And he's like, also, I love you and junk, and probably that stuff we did in Bell was the greatest moment of my life. Right. Bye. <laughs> so then he takes off, and you know what's going on there. Yeah, we know. We know. We're all about what's happening. She's there. like, I'm gonna go fight because dude. because she's over here having this battle, and he and the boys are over here going, "Hey, we're super screwed right now because if that thing blows up when it hits its target, everything is dead. If you blow it up here, everything's dead. If you fucking crash it someplace, everything near the crash is dead. So they're like, we got to do something else with it. And he's like, I got a plan. And he runs over there and he gives her the goodbye. He hands, gives her his hands watch. off his watch, and then he takes off sprinting for the plane. He mounts the plane, takes out the dude that's flying the plane. Which, and the other dude. Which was super badass. Um, that one dude didn't stand a chance. He just throws him out the plane. <laughs> well, he stood a bit of a chance if he wasn't a dumb. He was super dumb trying to fight him Because he like had that. the advantage. He yeah. hit the first. He was like, there's a dude in my plane. And he, like, whacks him. He's like, stop being in my plane. <laughs> and then he grabs him and just throws him out of the plane. Yeah, he's like, I'm not in the plane. No. And he might as well have screamed no ticket when he threw him out of the plane. <laughs> and then the guy, obviously, the pilot's just like. He didn't I'm, stand a chance. Yeah, he's like, I'm piloting a plane. Yeah. And hey. then, of course, Steve hops in there. He takes him out. And he starts just gaining altitude. Yeah. Higher and higher and higher. And, of course, the chief that's in this. Yes, chief is an actual character. He's Native American that's in this movie, which I, his placement was also kind of odd, but it is what it is. Anyway, yeah, so like it starts it. flying higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And he's like, it's made of hydrogen, so. It'll blow up. It'll just blow up. It'll all be good, right? Yeah. And you see him building himself up. Like, he, the, that moment of him, like, pumping himself up for it. Yeah, where he's like, he's I'm like, going to die. He's like, oh, God. Oh, God. And then he just reaches, like, he turns like he's going to shoot, like, two or three times. And then finally he's like, whew, and he does it. And the whole thing goes, kaboom. Yeah. And she, at that moment, that's her Super Saiyan moment, as you're referring to yeah, it. Yeah, where she's like, holy shit, Steve Trevor's dead. I'm mad. Oh, I'm super mad now. This is your fault. And then she turns into the Flash for a second. So, okay, um, and I told you about this before. There's a lot of in in Wonder Woman. There's a in, her, in comic books and things of that nature. There's a lot of moments where she's like bound. She's tied up in some fashion. Yeah. And they did that with this too, because fucking Ares wraps her up in metal. Yeah. And she lays there watching as the guy that she's basically. Well, I'd say she's fallen for him at that point. Yeah. I, I mean, she boned him and Veld. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. No, that, that happened. That happened. Yeah. They had that moment where they were like. She gave him the we fucking eyes, and he's like, I'm closing this door. <laughs> yep. And then they went over, and it black screened. That yep. is the that universal is the universal of, of we fucking. Yeah, I'm putting something in somebody else. Yeah. And, uh, in a way that is not murder. <laughs> yeah, the way you poke another person without making them bleed out. Yep. Yep. So that happens. They're here, and she watches him blow up. Yeah. And she's bound, as I mentioned just a moment ago, in the metal. And yet, suddenly, she's like, Rah! and explodes free of it. Well, uh, to what you were saying just a second ago about her being bound, there's two points. One is, obviously, Wonder Woman being bound in media probably stems from an unfortunate and obvious reason. Mm-hmm. A very sexual reason. Yeah. Yeah. People be like, yeah, when you know, whenever they're making Wonder Woman, they're like, fuck yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, it didn't start here. This has been like this for all, like as well long as Wonder Woman's been around. There's but multiple issues. It's of that. also um, a narrative tool that exists, especially heavily in the superhero genre, 
Because you have these characters that are so larger than life and so beyond powerful, right? Right. So having those moments where you take power from them entirely is um, a t- you do that so that like oh well, why wouldn't they why wouldn't she have saved Steve Trevor blah 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 right, right. well it's because this is happening power has been taken from them so that they can observe the effects of that loss of power. Just like with Superman and his kryptonite. Pretty much every time kryptonite shows up, ever. Either it just shows up so that somebody can wave their dick around like, I've got kryptonite. Right. And then Superman can beat them up anyway. Or they're like, I've got kryptonite. Also, I've got Lois Lane. I'm going to drop her in a vat of acid now. (laughs) You can't catch her because I've got kryptonite. And then Superman's got to figure out a way to do it because power's been taken from him. Right. So in that, that's and that's what they did here. Also, they were like, "Look, now you get to watch Steve Trevor die. His ass is totally dead now. Look at how much you saved him." So it I was zero. I, I was doing some reading on on this. Um, by the way, if you if you, <laughs> if you search Wonder Woman Bound, uh, you're you're going to get some weird stuff. Thanks, yeah. Internet. <laughs> Do what? Thanks, Internet. Thanks, Internet. Um, but. I'm going through, and I, I found the one I was looking for. It's uh, uh, science fiction and fantasy uh, stack exchange, apparently. And uh, it says, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's only weakness is being bound by a man, question mark. And it says, I know that Wonder Woman only, ha- only known weakness is being bound by a man. However, is it only being bound by a man does she have any other weaknesses and it goes through and discusses a bunch of things and says being bound by a man hasn't been a weakness of woman wonder woman for a long time that base dates back to uh, early incarnations of wonder woman uh, when she was basically just an excuse to show bondage in comics her creator was um, a big preponderant of that and uh, yeah so apparently that's a thing that's a, one of the image clips of the actual like comic book strip thing. Is, well, hot fucking damn. Yeah. So it does go strong. There, That is still a narrative tool. Yeah. yeah. But this is more heavily leaning on the other thing. Yeah. For at least the other stuff. Yeah. Here, I think it's the tool. Yeah. Because, I mean, she's wrapped up in metal. Because I, 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 I knew that I had read that. I knew that I had read that at some point in time. And and then, like I said, then oh, I went. Damn, and, that's jacked up. Right, and then I went and saw this in the theater, and I'm like, "Wow, well, okay." So they did that. <laughs> oh man, I'm a superhero, but my only my only weakness is sexual bondage. <laughs> so she managed. I could live with that. <laughs> <laughs> I could. Oh no! Please don't capture me, Mister Villain. <laughs> oh no! This isn't doing it for me. Sorry, you're gonna have to leave now. And so. She whips the bricks off Ares. I'm still strong. I'm sorry. You're going to have to do choke yeah, harder. Choke harder, stupid. <laughs> I could still... Slap be- me. Slap me. No, come on. Like a man. Get the chains. So she beats down Ares, which... Where's the gimp and the butter? <laughs> do, do we know if Ares actually perished as a result of this? I'm trying to think. I don't think that we have that as a I definitive mean, answer. Again, she blows him up with a lightning bolt the size of Texas. Yeah. So I think probably. Probably. <laughs> and she left a big crater as a result of it. Yeah, I mean, we don't see him at the bottom of that right. crater. Right. So I don't know. All I all we do know is yeah, that she can wrangle. She like wrangles lightning. He's chucking lightning, and she wrangles lightning, and then whips him down with it. Yeah. So, she's got some. She's got some clearly undefined powers that we were. Well, yeah. I mean, in there she goes as like Flash esque speeds. Not not as fast as Flash, but she is definitely much faster. She has one of those um, fucking <coughs> moments where she is moving faster than everyone else with one of those augmented speed moments. Yes, and she whips like forty two dudes asses in like. 1.2 seconds. Yep. Now, she does have that moment where Ares is like, hey, I didn't kill him. She killed him because Dr. Poison just kind of literally rolls into the mix and she's holding a tank. Also, not exactly true. Steve Trevor kind of killed Steve Trevor. Kind of. 
But that wouldn't have happened had she not created the thing. Well, it wouldn't have happened if he wouldn't have shot the bombs. Well, true. But the bombs were what facilitated all that. He wouldn't yeah. have had to. Which came first, chicken or the egg? I mean, so, we could but, also blame the guys who loaded the bombs on the plane. Yeah, well. But, or the guy who built the plane. Fuck that guy, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> if, you hadn't built this, if you hadn't built this plane, they couldn't have loaded bombs on it. If they didn't load bombs onto it, then... Yeah, just go all the just way go back. all the way back. The first guy who fucking discovered how to use iron, <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> so she's holding this tank, literally holding a tank. She's kicked a tank already in this movie. No, she she lifts, she picks it. Up I know, but she the no, she, yeah, that's right. She picks it up and like rolls it. Yeah, but this time she's like holding it above her head, getting ready to crush this chick. Yeah, which that whole scene, while awesome. Throws nothing but question marks on what her capabilities are. Yup. Which is not good. Now, some question marks are obviously fine. There's there's a, a lot of wiggle room in terms of what a given superhero is capable of right. in a given set of narratives. Right. Because uh, obviously, you know, Thor's powers evolve throughout the story of his comics, but you should be able to go at least within one comic book and be like, okay, this is... Yeah, this is what their abilities are. This is what I can expect. Because as the writers change, they're like, man, wouldn't it be cool if they had bacon vision? <laughs> so Which before creates bacon. Right. Bef- their before eyes. we delve off way deep into all of this, I know we're like right here at the very end of all of this episode's business. Okay. Um, we're, we're either right at it or just past it. Um so, with that said, I think we're plus five minutes as of right now. Is that right? At five. At five minutes. At five minutes? At five. Oh. Live so, at five. Oh, we well, have you five go. minutes? You got five minutes. Yeah, see, we're good. So, I'm I'm not trying to run way over, but... Um, so, there is kind of some question marks in regards to the extent of her abilities and powers. Yeah. Just how strong is she? Right. Just how fast can she get? Right. How often can she use lightning? And, and when to she... what extent can she use the... Everything get away from me button. Where she her slaps her bracelets together and everything just explodes away from her. Yeah. yeah. There's there's some interesting stuff there, and I think some of that will be fleshed out. Hopefully it will be fleshed out when we actually get to Justice League. I don't think they will. Yeah. I think they're Justice just going to. they're going to be too busy. I think they're just going to throw a big question mark on it and go, this is vaguely what our abilities and are. And then they're going to use her to fill in any gaps they need. Right. They're like, oh, man, we need somebody to super lift this. Yep. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Yep. Because Batman can't. <laughs> Not yeah, without a well, robot. He's like, ah, I got a Mac loader in my pants. <laughs> it's in my utility belt. My other utility belt. Anyway, so there is one other thing um, that you'd pointed out. She has the ability to conceal her clothing. Yeah, no, she's su- she can change her clothes <laughs> like a cartoon character. <laughs> she can just whirl around and boom, there it is. Well, it's like they used to do it, right? Where you know she'd spin in a circle and she'd just be in her outfit. Yeah. So can Superman. See, Superman at least has the advantage of his normal he's wearing clothes. Like, he's wearing like a business suit with like... Which a, goes you know, all the way up to yeah. his neck. The blue dress in the, the in the trailers that you see her wearing at the gala where she's got the sword in, her, in the back of her dress. Mm-hmm. It's like a deep cut right yeah. there across the top of her breast, right? But her armor has this like bird thing that comes like way up here. And so there's this odd overlappage, right? Where Which, if she's wearing the armor underneath it, it would still in certain aspects be visible. Also, the Maybe armor it folds down or snaps on. The armor isn't sleek either, right? It has like those adornments, but the dress whereas is. The dress is like kind of yeah, well, fitting, right? And then she later is chasing after Ludendorff, and it seems like she just fucking throws the dress off, and she's and in, in her in her armor, armor. <laughs> which means that so either she got back to her horse. Changed really quick, and then and put the dress on, on top of it, and then held on to the oh, dress yeah, to yeah. And drop. Yeah, as or, it was kind of odd. It was just it was a little weird, a little 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 bit of tiny fluke. And there. it happened another time in there as well, but I'm having trouble bringing it to mind. Yeah, exactly. there's there's two times when there's a like a clothing change that seemed a little odd. Where Maybe she's, she's like, like a Power Ranger, perhaps. This clacks her uh, things together. Yeah, and she just she's summons like, wow. her armor exactly, and just like. Ching, ching, and then holds her arms out and shit just lands on her. Maybe. Like Iron Man? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. But not really. 
So, yeah, no, it, like I said, it was a good movie. I didn't have a problem with it. Yeah. Um, one storytelling issue that I had with it is is it starts in the future, goes to a flashback, goes to a subsequent uh, narrative flashback to give more detail of the Amazonians, goes back to the standard timeline, goes over, hits Chris Pine's character, goes into another flashback, then continues on with the entirety of the story, well, then goes back to the future. <laughs> it's all framed as her recollection of those events. Right. But it's there there was still her recollection of the events to his character who then has another one within her recollection of events. Yeah. There there's several they drop into a couple frames every now and then. It's a frame narrative. We see but you see what down. I mean? It yeah. seemed the just the way that was put together seemed a little odd to say the least. I uh, you know, if you for me anytime Anytime I've ever tried to go to write a story, because anytime I ever do I actually sit down and write, which you got to find a good spot. Where do you start telling the story, right? At what point does do you start picking up? And, you know, it's kind of like the episode of Rick and Morty where he's like, I'll let you use my tower, but you're going to listen to my story. And then Morty's like, I'm not a big frame, uh, not a big fan of, you know, this happens. And then two weeks earlier, it's like, that's your starting point, Right. Usually the best idea is to start where it is interesting. <laughs> right. And so, the, I, and I understand the reason they couldn't do that with this, right? Because they were showing its direct connection to... To Batman versus Superman. Yeah. And and that's the only reason to start it this way. Which she works in the Louvre? Apparently. Good for her. Right? I Also, she seems to have a really awesome office. I know, right? What is her job? I don't know. I don't know, but it's super cool. Do you think maybe she's like restores them, or do you think she's just like a curator? She has to be a curator. You think? I don't know. Her office was fucking rad. I know. It super doesn't super actually cool. say on here what her exact I don't title think it, is. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a thing. Probably just like, that's not even her office. She just broke in. Yeah, she just broke in and started like grabbing stuff. Oh, but she get, logs into that computer. Have, have you seen like, Neil deGrasse Tyson's office? Yeah. It's pretty rad. Yeah. It has some well, cool shit in it. Yeah. So. I don't know. I don't know. I just, all I know is that she's just walking into the Louvre, and she's like, "I work here." She talked to people like she was supposed to be there when she first walked in. Yeah, and those dudes from Wayne Wayne Enterprises were brought like, her the thing. Yeah, so see, yeah, I don't know. That's super weird. Like I said good movie. I enjoyed every bit of it. They're yeah. just like a little few little storytelling flukes that were here and there that I was like... Right oh. now, it is easily going to be the one that carries the fucking shared I, universe. I actually saw a, a meme online. It was oh, of Wonder Woman carrying, carrying Batman and Actually Superman. carrying Batman and Superman, and it's... <laughs> Don't worry, boys, I got this. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they've got... Because so far... Three movies under their belt. Four. What is the fourth... Suicide Squad. Okay, what are the other two? Okay, so you've got um, uh, Man of Steel. Oh, God. Okay, yeah, I forgot Man of you Steel. you got Man of Steel. you got uh, Batman vs. Superman. That's the one that I missed. There you go. Okay, so... Because that, as I was discussing on Spellcast, that is that is the DC's universe's foundation. Yeah, I forgot. And it is straight up flawed all the way across the board. So, uh, the fucking... Statistic is even worse than I thought. Yes. They've got four under their belt yes. and one good one, one. One good one. That's right. <laughs> the others aren't even like okay. They're bad. They're bad, bad. Now we have Allie who gets on here every once and again and tries to argue in the other She's direction wrong. of that. <laughs> I'm sorry, sister, but you're just wrong. Um, but yeah, no. Um, Justice League may be good. Maybe. Fucking fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to... Uh, Jason as uh, Aquaman, um, I th I'm probably going to be pretty happy about that. Um, Cyborg looks pretty pretty fantastic, so I uh, I'm, I'm maybe okay Ezra Miller will be awesome as the Flash. Maybe he's a pretty good actor. Maybe um, we'll see where they go with it. You know, yeah. I I I'm I am hopeful. This makes me at least willing to think about being hopeful. Right. This, As opposed to before where I was like, life is bad. Yeah, everything that they put out so far, and I was saying it on uh, Spellcast, they make good trailers. 
Yeah, they fucking do. They make great trailers. They make crap movies. They make great trailers. And that's why whenever Wonder Woman hit, and I was like, trailer looks great, but... Yep. The, so did all the other ones. So far, that doesn't mean dick. Except for the first Suicide Squad one, which was awful. Yeah. And they were like, we need to do something different. We should probably polish this turd. Well, no, they decided to go with an entirely different turd. Yeah. They were like, maybe we can find a shinier turd. <laughs> Just remember, boys and girls, you can't polish turds. You just can't. And it's not really worth your while to go looking for a shinier turd. Yeah, it's really not. So, I don't have anything else to add to this. I think it's a good movie. You should go check it out. Uh, Jareth, do you have any final thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. Not so much? Oh, I forgot to mention, my favorite Amazon. Like, whenever they're first at the, whenever she goes to see the training. Yeah. There's that lady up on, like, the stump. Oh, the big black but, chick that yeah, just dude, gets hit. She, she just, just turns like, and looks at her. She whacks her and breaks that stick. She's like, fuck you, bam! <laughs> and later she, like, whacks the shit out of Diana. And Diana's like, ow, but I'm still going to fuck you up. Yeah. She was awesome. Yeah, that I was like super her. cool. That was super cool. I, I liked built that. like a Mack truck. I like that role reversal, too, where she's the one that hits Diana. And Diana's like, hey. Well, Diana's not, like... She wasn't as nonchalant about right. it, right? Because she was straight up like she was like you. You may me. have you may have ran up and hit her with a feather because she didn't move. And she was like, "I'm gonna kill you," <laughs> and I liked her. That was super cool. I she did like awesome. that too. That that was pretty good. I do appreciate all of that. So, anyhow, uh, Dire Monkey, you didn't have uh, much to say during this because you haven't gone and seen it yet. I have not. But uh, I know you guys got something going on over here for uh, Spellbook Studios that yep. uh, people should probably pay attention to the forums for. Keep an eye on the forums. We've got um, something new on the horizons in the next, uh, I'm going to say a week. Yeah. It could be sooner than that, actually. Is it a penis? Uh, yeah. It is. Might be. Yes. You, you figured Nailed it out. It. Son it's of a, a bitch. hippo penis. Wait, wait, those aren't called hippos. They're uh, huppos. Huppos. A hot penis? <laughs> a hot penis. <laughs> yes. So Next get over week. there. Check that stuff out. Uh, make sure you go over to uh, Flick Freaks all this week. Um, Andrew's got uh, E3. You're actually heading over there in the next little bit to talk about uh, Bethesda. Yup. You're going to get some hate. Yup. Yup. Jared's going to piss off the internet. Yup. And they're going to make fun of my weight. Because <laughs> they're just mean like that. So, other than that, boys and girls, we'll see you in the next episode about two weeks out from now. Uh, we'll be in the studio recording uh, right around the 25th. And I think that episode is going to be Book of Henry is one of the movies that I'm wanting to see. The fuck is Book of Henry? It's the one with that kid that's like super smart and then like partway through the trailer they start planning an assassination or something of that nature. They're trying to kill some guy. None of this sounds like a thing I'm aware it of. It looks hilariously wonderful. Uh, I don't know if it looks actually funny, but it's like, like as I was watching it, like the whole premise of the movie as they're setting up the trailer, you're like, oh, it's another thing where you've got like a gifted kid and he's in like a really awkward home life thing, right? And then like partway through the trailer, um, he's making friends with some girl and then I guess the dad is like abusing the daughter or whatever. And so he's like... Mom, we totally got to do something about this, and they're like trying to plan a way to kill this this guy. And so he's got this book of like plans, and the mom has it, and he's like, "You have to do these things." And it looks pretty cool. What the? Fuck? It's called the Book of Henry. It looks really cool. Never heard. And of then it. the other one is uh, Transformers. So we'll probably uh, do uh, do both of those. So, oh, well, you don't want to see uh, Bark Wahlberg. <laughs> Bark Wahlberg. I don't want to give Michael Bay my money. <laughs> but you're going to. No, I'm fucking not. Bark Wahlberg. I still like the fact that you were all mopey when you saw Bark Wahlberg on the uh, uh, the commercial the other day. The commercial from last night where you're like, Mark Wahlberg, what are you oh. doing? <laughs> yeah, he's just like in a stupid commercial for <laughs> internet. Yeah. No, it was uh, uh, TV and where you get your TV. I don't think it was an internet thing. It was, it was a cable company, yeah, so yeah. they're also internet. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, he's like, yeah, we want our TV like, and what stuff. What the fuck, Marky Mark? What are you doing? You're better than <laughs> He's doing protein shakes ads at IV. Yeah. I think those are, I don't think those are ads right. just for those. I think those are his right. protein shakes. I think they're Marky Mark brand protein <laughs> shakes. <laughs> Yeah, he made Maybe all of so. them. I hope they're if they're called Marky Mark protein <laughs> shakes, I'm buying a case. <laughs> he made them himself. Like I'm, I 
I'm pretty sure those aren't just like they. I don't think they just hired him. I think they're his. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. We'll have to do some digging on that. I'm gonna not. I'm no. I'm not. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna not, leave I, the mystery. I'm, I'm actually gonna leave here and go to McDonald's so I can give two fucks. Hey, there you go. I don't eat protein shakes. Yes, you do. Gross. <laughs> If by protein shake you mean I blend up a cheeseburger and drink it. <laughs> we were having that discussion earlier today about him eating a salad. And he's like, no, I refuse. I get a salad craving every once in a while. Do you? Yeah. But then I put ham and... Yeah, so yeah. you put all the stuff yeah. on it too. You know, little bacon pieces. Mm-hmm. So No, big bacon pieces. All right. Well, boys and girls, you have yourself a safe night. And we will all see you in the next one. Bye. Would you stop that?